Hey, what's up everyone, Warrior Coast here, and today we're gonna to be going over the keys of a great throw, and we're gonna start the video right now. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is going to be the upper body, just because I think that the way that you utilize the upper body has a direct impact on how well you're gonna be able to utilize the lower body. So we do wanna get the upper body intact and have something that is consistent that we can use to be able to really perfect the throwing mechanics the best of our capabilities. We are gonna use Patrick Mahomes, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet lately talking about how Patrick Mahomes does not have great mechanics, you know, going more towards Tom Brady and, through, and towards Drew Brees. And, you know, it's not that I don't think that Drew Brees and Tom Brady uh, don't have great mechanics. I think they also have great mechanics. But to say that Patrick Mahomes, who has one of the strongest arms in the NFL and, you know, is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the NFL, does not have good mechanics to me is just ridiculous. Uh, just because, you know, if you think about anything that you could be great at, um, if you can be actually great at it, you have to have great mechanics in order to do that, right? You can't be a great jumper and not have great jumping mechanics. You can't be great at pitching and not have great pitching mechanics. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes can get better with his mechanics, but to say that his mechanics are terrible or are not good, uh, to me, is ridiculous. So, you know, want to be able to just guide you guys in a direction to actually look at this in the most sensical way that you can, right? Like, it doesn't make sense for somebody that has one of the strongest arms in the NFL to have not good mechanics. That, that just doesn't work, right? Um, and so make sure that you're just able to kind of decipher the information that you're getting. And so we'll get started on some of the upper body mechanics. Now, there's so many different ways that we could really utilize the upper body and how we're throwing. We have a couple different options here. Uh, big thing that, you know, I, I would say is we don't want to end up dropping the ball too far down, right, as we're initially loading back. Okay, we want to keep that ball at least to belly button height. I see a lot of guys will end up dropping the ball below that, which ends up impacting how quickly you're able to get the ball out of your hands, right? The other big thing is we want to just be able to go and load the ball back. You know, different guys do that in different ways in terms of, you know, how they load the wrist. We see, you know, like Zach Wilson here goes and brings the nose of the football more backwards, where Patrick Mahomes keeps the nose of the football more downwards. Either way, you can end up obviously having a lot of success. But now from there, we really want to be optimizing the elbow drive, right? So one of the big things that I see is that from this position, really a lot of just pure movement going back with the ball. And that just ends up making it so where you end up generating the force from becomes much more of a sagittal motion, right? Just like forward, straight forward and, and backwards in that plane rather than a rotational motion. Right, and that where is where you end up having a lot of difficulty because what we want to be able to do is make this as much of a rotational movement pattern as we can because that's where force production comes from. So if you end up going really far back with the ball, now when you end up coming through, you end up having to basically just come right up over the top. And, and that you know can work if you're six seven, six eight, you know, if you're a big guy, that could work, but really it's about optimizing rotation. And that's what you know. Patrick Mahomes does really well here is he keeps that ball really away from his head, right? So this ends up being where force is being generated around. It's like if you were trying to chuck, you know, like a, a giant, maybe, I mean, trash bag or even like a golf club or something like that, you know, you'd want to wield it away from your body. You'd want to make sure that it all stays you know, far away, and then you would chuck it like that. You wouldn't be all close with here and then try to throw it like that or, you know, up over the top, whatever the case may be. And that is what ends up happening to a lot of you guys is that you have the ball so far back right next to your head, right? And I'll show Josh Allen here in a second so you can see, you know, what he does. And then when you end up throwing, there just is no force being created on that rotational plane. So the further away that you can keep the ball, then the more you could use the rotation happening within the hips and within that upper body in order to make it so then you can create a lot of force on the actual throw, right? We're gonna see the same thing here where, you know, the, there ends up being a quick movement back, right? Zach Wilson's a little bit different in that he goes back and really brings that elbow back a little bit more, right? Where you can see that Patrick Mahomes keeps that elbow out in front of him more, but both of them are very efficient in driving that elbow through. Like Wilson does a little bit more of, you know, bringing that ball up close to his body, right? And that ends up being a big difference in terms of force production, right? Arm strength. You know, Patrick Mahomes has very, very natural arm strength because of how far away from the body he 
keeps the ball. Same thing will go to, to Josh Allen here. Same thing here, okay? Does a great job of, and he really loads the ball a little bit more like Zach Wilson, and then really drives the elbow straight through. Okay, and the key ends up being how well can you keep that ball away from your body as you load the elbow and the shoulder, right? So you get to this position, we want to be able to keep that ball away from the body. We don't want to bring that close to our spine or towards our midline. We want to be able to keep it away so then we're able to generate more stretch within the core, within the shoulder, within all those different muscles there in order to really fully maximize the amount of rotational force we could put on the ball. So what Josh Allen is doing here is he's keeping that ball away from him. So now as he pulls through with those hips and through that upper body, he's really able to create a large whip on his arm, right? You can see how he just flicks that wrist and flicks that arm in order to really generate all the force. So really the way to do that is, is more so in how he loads, right? How he sets himself up with his force production. So right now he's just loaded the shoulder, he's loaded his core, and then from there drives the elbow through and, and just flips the wrist. And that's where all that, that force, and that's the, the snappiness that you see that a lot of those elite quarterbacks have. It goes into how well you can actually load the arm and load the shoulder in order to maximize the force production. And then we just gotta work on the wrist flick, right? So you gotta be able to work on this load here to make it so you can really do this effectively every time, whether you're throwing it to the right, throwing it to the left, throwing a deep ball. You know, you really wanna be able to really make sure your arm motion and your arm mechanics are very, very consistent because once that gets off, right, if you can't consistently move your arm correctly, then it's gonna be impossible for you to utilize the lower body correctly. Next, we're gonna go into the lower body, but before we do, if you like the information so far, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you have any questions, comments, recommendations, you can go ahead and leave those down below. And then real quick, I just wanna say in the description down below, if you like this information and you want to get a Zoom session or a breakdown from me, go ahead and check out the description right now just because I think it'll be really, really beneficial for you to get a better understanding of exactly how you can improve within your own mechanics and we do do that within our breakdowns or the zoom session i think is really going to be most beneficial because then we get on a one-on-one -on -one call you can ask questions we'll go over everything live and to me that ends up being the most beneficial thing it'll be you know about 45 minutes all together but and i think it'll be the most valuable 45 minutes that you could possibly get you know a lot of people spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on these camps that really don't even go into the specifics of what you need to work on from a quarterback perspective but within 45 minutes, I guarantee you walk away with so much information that you'll be able to utilize in improving your throw. So go ahead and check that down in the description, or you can sign up for our program. The program's going to have three months of that, right? So it's just going to be a longer commitment to improve your mechanics, and I obviously highly recommend that. If you're not looking for as much of a commitment, you can check out that one-time Zoom session, just because you know, you'll know you still get a lot of value from that, but if you're looking to make a long commitment and really make some big-time changes, the three-month option is going to be the, the one to go with, and that's going to be in the description down below. We're going to go into the lower body. Okay. Okay, so there's a few things that are going to the lower body in order to really maximize that. And the first thing, and I think the most critical part is gonna be the step, right? If we look at these guys, what they're doing is they're just going straight out with the step, okay? What you can't end up doing is having too much, you know, additional rotational movements going on within that initial step. You wanna just get that front foot down, right? And if we don't have that front foot down, then we're not gonna be able to effectively transfer our weight onto that front leg. And what I see, and, and really I would highly recommend you guys, it, take this angle, right? Get this back angle, because you can see so much with your load and your arm, right? And you can also see so much with your front foot and how you're landing with that front foot. And you know, so big thing you can see is he just goes and reaches and gets that front foot down. And now from there, allows himself to be able to create rotation and allow all the weight to shift onto that front leg. So a lot of you guys, what you do is that there's additional rotational movements happening within that foot as it's touching the ground, which limits the ability for your back leg to be able to push off and really for your weight to be able to come forward and through as you're throwing the ball. And that ends up being the biggest problem that I see with the lower body. You know, there's a lot of guys that are able to push off the back leg well, uh, you know, are not necessarily, you know, loading into that back leg. So, you know, Zach Wilson's in a great position right here where he's got that knee bent, right? And he's very vertical with the posture. And that's gonna be important. I see a lot of people that are a little bit too straight up, don't load into the hip properly. And that's something that, you know, is a little bit easier to address 
But the bigger thing is going to be the step. Right, so we do want to have a bent knee. We do want to be able to, to shift back into that back leg and really understand how to load the hip. And we do have a video right here that will help you in understanding how to load that back hip if you want to check that out. But you know, big thing is we want to make sure that we're going to be able to sit back and load properly in that back leg to then make sure that we're able to shift the weight forward. Okay, so if we're not loading into the back leg, then what will happen is that you'll a lot of times just get just a forward kind of push and not very much of a, a rotational push. Uh, or you'll also I'll see sometimes guys that just like rotate really, really early on in the throw within the leg. And then when they are shifting their weight onto their front leg, end up really leaning over the side with the hips and with the body uh, instead of being able to really rotate during the actual throw, right? So there, there, it's a lot that goes into how to properly utilize the hips. And there, there's so many mistakes that I'll see. It's like impossible to be able to go over everything within, you know, this one video. So I want to be able to give you guys some understanding and some clarity with it. But big thing is, you know, loading into that back leg. So you make sure you have a, a slight bend in the knee, okay? Making sure that your, your head is slightly out in front of, you know, your hips right? So you don't want to end up being too upright and tall. You do want to have a, a slight forward lean and keeping this knee bent. So you're essentially in just like a good athletic position here. Okay. It's like, as if you're going to have to like move side to side quickly. That wants to be really the, the framework that you're thinking about. We're stepping, we're, we're landing with that front leg. And you can see from this position, if we go back here, we draw a line here, how he kind of drives those hips forward, right? So he's already starting to get hip extension, which is like when you're jumping and you're driving your hips through, like the, you're like a thrusting motion. So you can see that he's he's getting that out of the hips, but he's also starting to move the hip, the, the head back a little bit, okay, as he's loading. But now what's happening is that he's shifting his weight forward and rotating through as he drives that elbow through. He's not leaning over to the side, his hips aren't going this way and upper body going this way. Everything is going forward towards the target and it's all set up because of how he got his front foot down on the ground. So, you know, there you don't want to end up getting too much weight when you're landing with this front leg. You want to land with that front foot and still have a good amount of weight back, right, on your back leg. We don't want to have our weight back falling over to the side, we want to have our weight back here. And then as our elbow is coming through, our hip is really the driving force behind everything. So as he's driving his elbow through, his hips continuing to rotate, continuing to rotate, continuing to rotate. So now as he gets to the point where he's releasing the throw, he's in an optimal position of stretch from this hip to this shoulder to then, you know, the, the actual wrist and hand, right? Because there's muscles that go all the way. If we're looking at the front side of the body, we'll, we'll use Zach Wilson here. There's muscles that go all the way through, you know, right here. So it goes from your, your hip through your core onto your shoulder. There's an actual line of muscle there. And then from your shoulder, obviously, there's a whole chain of muscles that go all through your arm. Okay, so this whole chain, we want to be able to optimize that in terms of where our stretch is happening. So then when we're releasing the throw, we can generate that snap that we need and to create a lot of force in the throw. So where the biggest issue that people have is that they end up shifting their weight to different sides and, and not utilizing the rotational aspect that the body is set up to utilize, right? And again, this is mostly because of the load and how the arm is set up to be able to fire. And even Zach Wilson, I'd say, can get a little bit better with this. But, you know, then if we don't set up the load properly with the arm to make it so we can, we can snap through, then we're not going to be able to ever get there no matter what we do with the, the lower body. So then after we start to get the load better, and, and it is something that you got to work on, you know, there's a lot of guys that don't have great habits with their upper body. But as you start to get better with that, then we got to really sync up the lower body with the throw, right? So the first thing is you got to be able to, to get a, a consistent arm action, okay? Because if, if the arm action's off, then the, the lower body is going to be off. You can't have a good lower body and a terrible upper body. You could really have great upper body mechanics, but have terrible lower body mechanics. And I see that sometimes. And, you know, being able to work on that really makes a big difference. But, you know, a lot of times once you get off with your arm, then it, it throws off what you're doing within your, your hips and within your front leg and everything like that. So th those really play into each other a lot. 
um, but you really want to make sure that we get the arm arm down you can more specifically go after that that lower body and and the rotation within the the trunk and the core so that ends up being you know if we're going to go and stage exactly what you want to do in order to improve your mechanics first thing's going to be getting that load down making sure we get the front arm in a great position maintain make sure we're maintaining a great posture a great follow through all that wants to be you know something that we could do every single time and that's really a great thing to be able to rep out and think that something you could do at home on your own you know time and, and be able to really get great at that and then the next thing is going to be consistently working on just the front foot getting that front foot down right and making sure that when we get that front foot down keeping a lot of weight on that back leg that's going to be step number one okay and then from there as we go through the throw and start driving the elbow through okay we want to be able to rotate the hips first okay and then bring the elbow in, and arm from there Okay, so that would be the second thing. First thing, keep most of the weight onto that back leg, right? And as we're, we're landing with that, that front foot and make sure that front foot goes straight out. So that ends, ends up being probably the most difficult step is step one, right? Stepping, not getting additional rotation within that, that front foot. I know this isn't a great angle here to be able to see how the heel moves, but essentially just think of it as that heel just getting straight down on the ground. So making sure that that heel gets straight down on the ground when you're loading, we can just make that step number one. Step, make sure that there's no additional rotation happening within that initial step. Step number two is when stepping, making sure that we keep most of our weight onto our back leg. I like to say 60%. You know, Zach Wilson here, I would say when he's landing with his front foot, he's probably like 50-50. You know, some people say you could do more weight on the back leg. If you want to try to do more, then that's great. You know, I don't think that is really what, what matters. You just don't want to end up landing on that front leg and have all of your weight already onto that front leg. That's the most common mistake that I see with the lower body. Okay, and then from there, when the elbow is coming through, we just want to make sure that the hips are leading the way. Okay, so we don't want to have our elbow out in front of our hips. We want to have our hips leading the way of the, the motion to make it so we're continuing to rotate through the throw, okay? That would be three. And then number four is during the actual release of the throw, making sure that we're able to maintain a good balanced position so we're not falling off to either side, okay? So really steps one and two end up being most important in that, okay? That front foot and keeping the weight on the back leg. That's gonna be critical. Okay, once you can get those two things down, if you can get the upper body right and you can get those two things down, you're going to be throwing the ball well. Then, you know, you want to be leading with the, the hips. That's going to be a really a big thing when it comes to the deeper throws. And then you want to land balance. That's going to be a big thing with the accuracy. But, you know, if you can get these two, you're going to see big improvements very, very quickly within the throw. And, you know, then you can kind of go from there. So, uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching again. If you like the information, click that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I would love to work with you. I know a lot of you guys watch these videos. I think that there's a lot of improvement that could probably be made within your throw, which is why you're watching these videos so often. I would say that, you know, if you've been thinking about making a decision on something, the Zoom session is going to be the best way to go because, you know, we can connect, we can talk, you can ask questions. Uh, I, I really, really advise you to be able to do that. And, you know, would love to be able to help more of you guys out, obviously. I know a lot of you guys are watching these videos and, and are seeing some big improvements. So if there's anything that you think we can work on and, and make a big improvement within, I would love to hear that in the you know comments. If you guys have any questions, anything that you've been working on with your coach or your, or your team or anything like that, I want to be able to help you out any way that I can. So uh, definitely leave those down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching the videos and we'll talk to you soon.